white people suck. <laughs> <laughs> Why did just start the episode yeah. with just blatant racism? It's not racist, it's true. It is. Is yeah. it? Like black people can't swim. Is it racist to say bad? <laughs> is it racist to talk shit on white people? No one cares, dude. What's just because, like, in this new age of like, you know, you try to like limit the offensiveness. <laughs> like, do you like? Is it just bad to? Is this where it happens where we apologize to white people for being racist? No, no, you no. You know what? Well, you know, sweeping under the rug that you guys annihilated okay, okay. half the is it, dark people. Is it okay to be racist <laughs> to non-white, like non-Anglo-Saxon whites? Who the fuck is white? Like Chinese people? I guess. Koreans are white. I guess Asians are white. Well, some like, no, well I mean, they're, some of them are olive-colored. I mean, they're all... Like Australians. Are they Anglo-Saxon? Yeah, they came from England. Oh shit! Australia was a uh, was a penal colony. Is there is there a non-Anglo-Saxon white race? Oh shit! I don't think so, dude. Actually, that's a really good question. We should Google that. Not right now. Next ne- episode. Next episode. We'll, we'll we'll research it. That's our next research episode. Are there <laughs> white people that aren't? You know, shit. Pedro and Jose <laughs> study the whites. We're gonna have a BBC special. Mm. Why do they like to conquer those darker than them? What is their fascination with mayo? It's because we're better than them. <laughs> yes. It's Why? whenever they start a sport. It was a, who was that one comedian talking? I forgot who it was. He was like, you know, there was a guy on TV as a white guy talking about he's the best pickleball player in the world. Yeah. It's because black people's hadn't started playing it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like once the first black guy plays, it's like, well, we got to start a new game. Yeah. yeah as soon as, um, you know, darker tone people are like hey i fucks with this sport yeah that's when it all like the shifts because right now most of the people i've run into that play pickleball are just older white dudes yeah because it's a it's an older person game it's fun though it does get you moving okay i remember one i think uh (laughs) my wife had invited your wife to come play and she was like uh uh, i think we went to go like play board games Oh, and she yeah. was like, in this fucking cold? No. Oh, yeah. Like she, and I was just like, come on, guys. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, it is cold out there, but you warm up after you start moving. We liked, I like to put myself in uncomfortable, like, places sometimes. <laughs> I think it just helps you kind of, like, you know. Go to, like, a bear bar. I'm yeah. uncomfortable. I think it just builds a little bit of mental toughness, you know? Like, no, I remember one time my buddies decided to, like, on the coldest day of the year, that they decided to do this, they went to go climb Stone Mountain, and they were like, "Dude, it was miserable. Mm. It was awesome." Yeah, because <laughs> they're trying to climb up this mountain while the wind is just blowing at them with like the the coldest fucking winds, and they were like, "Dude, we thought we were gonna die, but we made it to the top, and we we're like, fuck yeah, yeah but- we're riding the gondola down because we're not <laughs> we're not doing the climb again." You slide off the fucking mountain. <laughs> what is it? Um, uh, back in like high school. We had the smart idea, me and my buddies. A bunch of us got together, and my buddy had this uh, big old, like, like wooden, like, corrugated steel fucking shed in his backyard. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're, like, where we do, like, band practices in. Um, we decided, like, hey, let's have a sleepover. Let's have a freeze out. We, d- we, we, f- we found the coldest day that was going to be that week, and we all slept there. Yeah. Bro, it was so fucking cold. We started, there was a little old wood stove there. Mm-hmm. And before, what we tried to do to prepare for this freeze out was uh, there was some old, like, fiberglass fucking insulation that we found. Yeah. So we were, we were like, stupidly, like, well, we don't want to get all over our shirts. So we took our shirts off and we're cutting it with, like, a fucking serrated knife. <laughs> so there's just fucking fiberglass flying everywhere. And we're just like, <clears throat> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and then we're putting it in like the gaps in the wall to try to, con- to like insulate the room a little bit. Yeah, it didn't work. But uh, later that day when we were cold, we're like, hey, let's finally start a fire. So we started a fire in that little thing mm-hmm. in the little wood stove. And what we didn't see was the wood stove pipe that was going out of the building, uh, out of the shed. <laughs> it was touching those fiberglass pieces. So oh. like we were sitting there, like I feel really lightheaded. Let's open the door for a little bit. No, it's cold. Nah, you're right. We should just stay in here for a bit longer. <laughs> and then finally, we were like, oh, there's smoke in here. Why didn't we notice that before? We opened the door, and bro, we were fucking suffocating in there. We, we walked out. We're like, oh, my God. I can think clearly now. What the fuck? <laughs> and we see the side. just smoke coming out the side of the fucking building. Oh, my God. You guys could have fucking died. Yeah, so we, we tore it all off, and then we just kind of threw it, like, in a pile. We kept the fire going. Just left the door up and let it, like, air out. 
And then, yeah, we just hang out there. There was already, like, a layer of ice on everything. Mm-hmm. He had, like, a little pond, and there was ice, and we were standing on it. Yeah. Uh, we played hide-and-go-seek in the woods. It was fucking freezing. <laughs> and uh, I felt really cool. Uh, but then afterwards, I was like, wow, I'm fucking brown. Um, I laid on a pile of dirt, and they didn't see me. No. Oh. Because I blended in. <laughs> 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 oh, that's just the normal dirt pile that wears a pair of glasses. <laughs> well, no, I took my glasses off <laughs> and I put them in my well, pocket. Imagine if you did, and then one of them comes over, huh? Jose dropped his glasses on this <laughs> dirt pile. <laughs> they just hear me like that fucking cartoon on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that shit was fucking cold. Dude. I remember uh, one of my buddies, his like his um. His house, though, we used to go over for, like, band practices. It was, like, a bunch of farmland because mm-hmm. his mom, like, raised horses and stuff. Yeah. And she also had, like, uh, like a big area where she just, like, took care of a bunch of stray dogs. She would come home with stray dogs all the time. Was this the one with the animal graveyard? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She had a fucking pet cemetery. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look at this cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third time I buried her. <laughs> I, remember. I remember she had this one dog named Rudy. This dog was fucking like invincible, invincible dog. It was like the the movie Rudy, the football player that was uh, really small. Well, this dog was mixed with coyote, and we were like, "Is it safe to have this dog around us?" And it's like, "Oh yeah, it won't harm humans, but it'll fucking kill anything else that isn't a dog." And uh, so humans. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> it wouldn't kill humans or other mm-hmm. dogs. Yeah. With this dog that uh, she tried to like let it go in the house sometimes. But that was a big mistake because every time it did, it killed a fucking cat. And she was like, okay, I need to stop trying to do this. How many times did she try? I think like twice. Uh, <laughs> the, the first time she was just like, oh, no, he needs to be trained. And then the second time, she, he like murdered another one. He's like, okay, this dog's never allowed. Third time's a charm. Come but on. I remember you could tell that he was like mixed with coyote because of the he had a bend in his tail. Yeah. You know, coyote's like tails like kind of bend like near mm-hmm. like like near like the, the beginning of the uh, where yeah. it comes off. And uh, he had roamed off to another neighbor's yard, and they thought he was a fucking coyote, and they shot him. Mm-hmm. But he survived. <laughs> and they shot him through the fucking chest, and he survived. This thing was invincible. This it, thing was, it was it was Blade, but for coyotes and dogs. Yeah. It was a and, fucking half-breed. And then it was like a couple of years ago, we got the news that he had finally died. And he died of a relatively old age. I think he was like 10. So that's not a bad age. I mean, it's not as old as he could possibly, but still, he got shot through the chest. She had an actual krypton. Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) But I'm like, how many, like, dog mix hybrids can you have? I mean, you could have a dog mix with wolf, with coyote, with... Oh, yeah. Wait, are foxes dogs? No, I don't think so. What is a fox, then? I think they're their own thing. Are they, like, a weasel? No, they're their own thing. Mm. Because I know, like, I've always, like, got interested into, like, the pet connections or the animal connections. Because you know how, like, you know... Technically, raccoons are bears because yeah. raccoons are related to the red pandas and the red pandas to pandas, pandas mm-hmm. to bears, you know. So I'm like, I want to see, like, uh, how deep me. that whole, like, connection can poss- possibly go. I was just listening to the last podcast and they were talking about a, a Maine wolf that's down in, like, uh, Brazil. Mm-hmm. Bro, these things are creepy looking. Uh, it's like a, it looks like a, it's not a wolf. They just call it a Maine wolf. It looks like a fox. It's not a fox. And it has really long legs. Huh. Yeah, it's really creepy. Like, look it up. Here. I'll look it up. But anyways. Yeah. Um, just to clear the air a little bit, just because in case anybody was wondering, a lot of people might be, you know, curious why they're, why we've been skipping a couple of weeks as far as the uploads go. That's just going to be a thing temporarily. Um, you know, what the fuck? That's a f- dude. That's a sexy ass dog. Look at those legs. It looks like it's got stockings on. <laughs> Long legs, Lenore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, uh, for anybody wondering, yes, we're gonna skip a couple of weeks. We're just uh doing this for per- uh, preparation because Joe is heading to Japan. He's gonna infiltrate the enemy country. He's gonna fucking f- uh, learn their ways, and soon we will take over the podcasting in Japan. I'm gonna walk over there and be like hentai <laughs> <laughs> tentacles. Sailor Moon, uh, Dragon Ball Z, dragging my balls all up in these bitches. <laughs> Octopus porn. Oh, bro, I can't wait. Censored so penis. Do what happens if you stay too long in Japan? Will your penis start to get censored? That's what I'm worried about. Mm. I'm only there for a week though, so it's gonna be upsetting for anybody who like really likes looking at their own penis. Yeah, I don't know how they've made it this far. 
I'm how, do, how do you put it in when everything's all pixelated and they're all pixelated? Well, one thing I've always been curious about: why is it in specifically in Japan in Japanese porn? They're very not keen on shaving. Like they're very much always natural. All natural, bro. It's it's is it, so is like shaving only like an American thing? I think so because like even like like you know European countries and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah some people do shave, but it's um. Well, I it's, per- it's kind of bad to be completely shaven. Because uh, I can your, see that. your pubic hair stops uh, stuff from like getting in like, mm. you. Like if, for ladies, it helps to trap stuff from getting inside you. I mean, I personally yeah. just like it like trimmed down. I don't like to be oh, yeah, like completely. Trim it up. I feel like when you're completely naked, it does feel a little cold. Mm-hmm. It feels a little way too breezy, and sometimes you get the shaving bumps. I remember it's because when I was young, well, so you know, that's why I don't shave. I mean, when I was young, I was under the interpretation. Like the under the understanding that that's just what was like what people wanted, yeah. you know, because I mean to be fair, girls back then most of them would didn't want to be hairy down there. They would shave it down because you yeah. know if you know you're gonna hook up, you don't want to have a, like I guess a hairy junk. I wouldn't have cared. But you want all the razor bumps, so huh? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like people like get together and they're like, oh, I, I'm about to go on a date. I should go shave, and then they fuck up and get all the razor bumps. My friends used yeah. to always give me shit because I would be like, you know what? I kind of like it when it's a little stubbly. Mm. You know, when it's starting to grow back a little bit, it's got that little friction to it. You can start a match on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like I like that I like that texture. It's After you're done. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like uh, when it's like completely shaven, that's great and all. But like, I don't care if it's hair. Yeah. It's all the same. Like I feel like people just a fucking nitpick. I remember I used to have a friend that was like that. He's like, I can't date a girl who doesn't shave down there. Who like wants to like have their hair a certain way. I remember he was weird about that shit. He was like, I can't date a girl that has a short haircut. I'm like, why? Like he's like he's that insecure. He's like it's too close to being like a man. I'm like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like you mean um, what man has like a little bob? Like what the fuck, bro? Well, a lot of guys do now, huh? A lot of dudes out there. With I know. Hair. There's some yeah. dudes walking around with fucking He-Man haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest shit ever. Dude. <laughs> um, I just like all the the fucking the the fucking uh, what's it called the the camera bros. Uh huh. The, the the fucking like haircuts that they do, like the little like bowl cut up yeah. top. Yeah. I decided what my next haircut's going to be. Is it going to be that? I'm not. I'm just going to grow it out. Again? I'm just growing it out. It's been a long time since I've had long hair. This is like high school. Yeah. Yeah. It's been like fucking like, what, 12, 13 yeah. years? I got a haircut this week. Um, no, almost 15, I think. Because I have an interview tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so I got a haircut. I just shaved the sides down again. And then I got them to take like two inches off the top. That is one thing I'm curious about. If I do start growing on my hair and I finally get to where like I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to get an office job. What is the protocol for like long hair? Just kept. Just keep it well kept. Yeah. You know. I'll be yeah. like, oh, wow, man. That's about it. Dude, you know what I'll do? I'm going to fucking grow it out and then just start doing, like, the slick back tight ponytail like they used to do back in the fucking day. <laughs> just listen to, like, all And then the just, have a, just have a big fucking, you know, like, porn stash. Like, really thicken it up. I'd say, You're going to look like a producer of porn? <laughs> you Come can be with a... me, baby. I'm going to make you a star. <laughs> Bend over and touch your toes. Let the camera see where the goose goes. <laughs> Remember to spread the lips. <laughs> you signed the NDA. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Yeah. I think about that a lot now. Predators, it's like, all of them. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 predators. I'm thinking about like think about how like accepting it is to be like a sex worker, but also the fact that like a lot of these people are eventually are gonna have like you know families, and it's gonna be easy for kids to be like, "Yo, I found your mom's OnlyFans, dog." <laughs> like, look, <laughs> I saw how you were made. <laughs> That's going to be a fucked moment, you know? Well, that's what happened with, uh, or what's going to happen soon with, uh, I saw it on uh, on TikTok that uh, Riley Reed, mm-hmm. uh, that she was pregnant or is pregnant. Yeah, she's got like, uh, it's because she retired from porn. And yeah. I think she, she married like, I think she married like a podcaster. Yeah, but like. <laughs> so guys, there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I, like, I, I couldn't. She, um, so she, she, you know, she's pregnant with this guy and everything like that. But yeah. people just keep fucking ragging on the guy. Yeah. They're like, is he is the baby black? Because <laughs> she did a lot of porn. Yeah. And a lot of it was some, like, fucking, like, some dongers. Yeah. To where this guy, he's either packing shmeat. Yeah. Or he's just okay with it, I guess. I don't know. Some dudes are just chill about it. It's he's kinda- a cuck. It's because, you know, a lot of people are really good with differentiating, like, sex from, like, an actual, like, relationship. Oh, you know? yeah. 
Because, you know, you can understand that one thing is done for pleasure and the other thing is done for, like, you actually care about the person. Yeah. And, yeah, it's hard. I think it is hard for a lot of men to not, you know, think about that. Like, you, you don't want to think about a significant other's, like, past lover, you know? Because it's like. Plural. Huh? Plural. Plural. Yeah. Or lovers. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have a specific vendetta against a specific person. Because yeah. that, cause that, that can happen. Um. Uh, me personally, I don't really think about it because I'm always been un- I've always had the mentality of like I was the last one, so I won. You know, yeah. like so it's kind of like yeah, you can brag about whatever you want or or say whatever you want. It doesn't matter, like because like if she was with you and didn't stay with you, that means you suck. <laughs> that means you're bad. So it's your fault that she left you. Yeah, like any. Uh, it's the same with like my exes. They'll probably like. He sucked, so I left him. I was like, I get it. Maybe I wasn't your cup of tea, so yeah. it's fair. Maybe you're just a bitch. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just a fucking whore. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> no, I mean, like, it, it, it's. Both ways. I hate yeah. when people do that shit. Have you have you ever been with one of those guys that's just like, yeah, we, it didn't work out with that girl, but whatever. She's a fucking bitch anyways, and yeah. fuck her, and fuck her fan. Like, bro. It sounds like you have an anger problem, dude. Chill the fuck out. Dude, yeah. I, there's one big fucking red flag I hate that a lot of dudes do. Have you, have you ever had a coworker that just complains about their spouse? Oh, yeah. Like, shut up. I don't care. Like, I'm sorry that that sucks for you, but you should have married somebody that isn't annoying. He was like, you know you can leave. Yeah. Yeah. Like, divorce. That's not a good sign, dog. Like, if you're married to somebody and you're always like, well, there she goes again. I fucking hate it. Like, you're just wasting your fucking time. Like, why did you get in a relationship with that person to to begin with? It's even worse if you have, like, a kid with her and you're doing the shit. And you're doing the shit in front of the kid. It's worse if it's worse when people decide to stay just because of the kids. Yeah, that's just, it's. You fuck up the kids. Yeah. They don't think about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why are your parents still together? They were just like, who else are we going to get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need papers. You need papers. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't work that way. It's it's sad when that happens. Yeah. It's sad where they're like, why are you all still together? Got too old. Yeah. Who the fuck am I going to date at this age? No, there's plenty of old people I'm out sorry, there I'm, fucking young. But usually it's because they fucking are just like, you know, they're just giving up. They're just yeah. like, what's the point? And I get it. Like, sometimes some people just get complacent. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, and then there's people that are like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we're just comfortable with each other. Yeah. Like, they, it's gotten to that point. And re- some people get to the point of a relationship where it's just like, we're just roommates. Yeah. And we, like, maybe we sleep in the same bed still. Maybe we don't. Mm-hmm. But we just live together. We're just comfortable doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, it makes me think of that uh, fucking um, Cat Williams joke where he was just talking about, I was like, I'm tired of these. If you're if you're a woman living today that's still like all men ain't shit. Uh, no, all the men you fuck with ain't shit. No, yeah. You need to find out what's wrong with your pussy that keeps attracting <laughs> no like uh, ain't shit motherfuckers. You it's know? always open. That's what's wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but he's speaking the truth as yeah. he always does. It's the uh, it's the fact and that like again, it goes both ways. Yeah, like, guys out there being like women ain't shit. It's like then you're fucking gay. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, I I I had a I had a friend that was like that sometimes. He'd yeah. always just be like, "Man, all these women, they're just out for you. They just don't give a fuck about you. They're just trying to get shit out of you." I'm like, it just kind of sounds like you got your heart broken one too many times because. You probably just sucked at being in a relationship, and I get it. Yeah. Being in a relationship is a lot of fucking work. Yeah, you know, and some people just can't handle it, and some people just don't know how to go about it. I think like there's too much of a stigma that like a man has to be a man sometimes, mm-hmm. and they think that, oh, if I open up too much, they're gonna think that I'm weak. And but then again, some women can be very toxic like that too. Some of them don't want to hear a man's problem. They're like, why the fuck do you got problems? I'm yeah. the one that's supposed to have problems. I'm like, no, that's not how that works. Yeah, it's. It's got to be mutual. Like, I don't understand why that thought, like, that, why that's still a thing in this age nowadays with, like, you, all the social media saying, like, hey, we need to stop this. This is what's fucking everyone up. Yeah. And people are still doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just, so people are just too fucking stubborn to change. I think it's because people, you know. Or are they're lazy. Well, I think they're just taught by it. 
Think about how many people come from like traditional yeah. families that are like, oh, uh, since you're going out on a date, you being a man, you got to pay for the bill. You got to fucking yeah. like. I remember I was reading uh, chapters of this like uh, slice of life um, manga that I'm reading called mm-hmm. um, uh, was it Goodnight Poon Poon? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's a good book. Goodnight Poon Poon. Yeah, that's the name of the character, Poon Poon. And uh, you certainly, the thing about this book, it's like it's a slice of life, but it's a very dark slice of life because there's a lot of shit in it. Because, like, like, you know, like um, you find out like the main character just doesn't understand, like, like things like how other people do mm-hmm. because he grew up around, you know, um, a household of like people that just are fucking like maniacs. Yeah. And um, there's this one part in the book where he finally convinces a girl to go on a date with him, right? And the whole time he's, like, forcing himself to, like, pay for everything. And the girl is, like, very off-put by it because she's just, like, this is, like, our first date. And you're already kind of, like, you know, forcing your way through. And then near the end of the day, he attempts to try to, like, kiss her. She's, like, no, slaps him, whatever. And then he basically goes on this whole spill of like, I was doing everything right. What the fuck did I do wrong? And she's like, like, what do you like? What do you mean? What do you mean you're doing everything right? You were like forcing to like pay for everything, even though I didn't told you not to. I kept telling you that this didn't have to be like a fucking like date date. Like we could have just mm-hmm. been having fun the whole time. But you were like hell bent on trying to like, you know, take the role of like, I'm going to show you like. What it's like to be with me, kind of ass thing. Like you fucked up this day. Yeah. It's like, and you, now that you're not getting your way, you're fucking crying. Yeah. A lot of dudes think that way. Yeah. It's okay to be a passenger prince, guys. It's always fun. Shit, that's all I've been yeah. wanting my whole life. Yeah, what are you talking about? It, no, it's those I'm days sick and like, tired of driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, or like you know, uh, it's nice. Like sometimes I'll get home and hands like, "What do you want to eat?" I'm like, "I don't care," and she'll take me out to eat. I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> You got me a burger. <laughs> I might just let her have it tonight. <laughs> I give you permission to touch it. <laughs> just look at it. Uh, uh, no, but it's just nice. Yeah, yeah. Like growing up too. Yeah, like I mean, we heard it from our <laughs> that's like parents that's when you like, know that's when you know you're a grown up. What is if you're ever like going home and you're getting you're like fuck I'm tired I'm ready for bed and they give you the advance and you're like but I'm tired yeah <laughs> I have a headache <laughs> you know, I went to the gym my legs hurt you know that happens a lot dude it does cuz sometimes you're just like so like you're physically worn out yeah. from like a long day of like cuz you know you've had those days before where you're like I got to drive here I got to go do this yeah. I got to go pick up shit you get home it's 8:30 you had a you got a late dinner that you 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 just watch some quick Netflix before bed and you're finally mm-hmm. like dozing off and then you know you probably ignored your spouse a little bit too much that day so they're like looking for some type of intimacy before you go to bed and then you're just like but I'm fucking exhausted I'm not just a piece of meat <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, you just get tired. That's fucking sucks. Like, no one tells you this shit when you start growing up. <laughs> just the mental image yeah. of us. Um, Wearing like, the curlers in our hair. No, I'm you, not meat, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in, like, little fuzzy slippers with, like, the fucking bathrobe. And then we're wearing the little shower cap. It's like, I've had it with you. I'm calling your mother tomorrow <laughs> and telling her how you've been acting lately. I'm staying at my mother's tonight. <laughs> Oh my god! No, do you have a bathrobe? Huh? No, actually, I don't. I don't either. I don't see the point. I mean, it's just, I guess, a way to dry down faster. I mean, that's what it's for, right? No, I thought it was like some of it. Aren't aren't there ones that are like towels? Yeah, but I mean, you don't. I don't. I don't know. That's the thing. Like Han, like Hannah, she has a bathrobe, and she wears it like you know when, she, like we wake up in the morning, and she just throws it on, goes let the dogs out. I mean, she has pajamas underneath too. Whatever. I guess not to be cold. Yeah, I guess I don't know, but then like. You know, in the movies, you see people wearing them around the house, like just get making breakfast and shit like that. Yeah, I'm like, I just feel like it's in the way. Yeah, some people will fall asleep in that damn thing too. Yeah, fucking strangle yourself with that shit. Dude. Yeah, I sleep. I fall asleep in my car heart. <laughs> Are you ready for work? Yeah, fuck? I go to bed with my boots on. 
You never know when trouble might strike. Trouble? <laughs> you never know when you have to build a porch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got that hand kill mentality. <laughs> you got a can of WD-40 for your can of WD-40? Uh, I've, I've, that's my favorite scene of uh, King, uh, King of the Hill. One of my favorite scenes. What? He goes to open his uh, WD-40, but he can't get the cap off. So he pulls a belt. <laughs> he has a belt thing with the WD-40 on it. Mm-hmm. He pops the cap off of that, sprays the bottle of that one, and puts that one down. And it takes the cap off to use the bigger bottle. <laughs> I remember there's one episode I was watching recently, and I, I forgot what it was. I think it was like <laughs> Peggy was trying to express like disappointment to like Hank about mm-hmm. something, and um, she, her example was like. Oh, Hank, did you hear about that propane convention in Alberta? And he's like, there's a propane convention in Alberta? And she's like, no. Well, why would you tell me that? You got me all excited. Now I'm disappointed. And she's like, well, that's exactly how I feel. And he's just like, all that did was upset me. And he just <laughs> 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 or just like um, like it's uh, like canonically, like in it's canon that Bobby Hill is a sharpshooter. Like he he's a really good fucking shot, apparently. Hmm. Hank is not. And then Cotton takes them out shooting. And Bobby's just fucking, like, hitting all these targets. Like, fucking, like... Oh, shit. And then uh, Dale, he's, uh, like, later in another episode, Dale is, like, on top of a clock tower because he's spraying for bugs. Mm -hmm. But I guess someone called the cops on him because they think he's, like, a fucking sniper up there with a rifle because it looks like he has a rifle waving it around. Yeah. And he's, like... The cops are yelling at him. He's like, oh, it's not a rifle. It's bu- it's spray. But his cigarette's in his mouth. Mm-hmm. So he actually lights the spray, and it's a fucking flame. He's like, oh, God. He throws it. <laughs> and it explodes on the ground. So then a bunch of cops come around, and they have him, like, held up up there. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I'm coming down. But if someone shoots me, I want Bobby to shoot me. I know he'll put me down clean. <laughs> and Bobby's standing there next to the time. He's like, okay. And he goes to reach for it. And stuff. He's like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I've been seeing all those memes lately of people being like, when you get pulled over by the cops, you want to make sure you effectively uh, give them your wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <you> just, <laughs> it's so stupid. Or the, that's one gonna... that's, uh, the one that's the the guy wearing the seatbelt is like, you want to tell the officer that you're wearing your seatbelt, so you yell at him, I'm strapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Those are terrible. Yeah. That's going to get somebody killed. Yeah, it is. It's that whole, like... Um, I mean, it's making fun of a problem. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time I was um, at like a, I was at like a party thing with like some family members, right? And one of them was just like talking about like a meme, whatever. Of like uh, or the meme had to do something with like um, intrusive thoughts, right? And I was like, oh yeah, I get those fucking intrusive thoughts all the time. You never get that intrusive thought about like reaching for the officer's gun, and they were like, no. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? I was like, what? You never seen an like an, a police officer's gun and and you were like, I'm gonna fucking grab it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like the moment it's the the guy like doing the slow move forward. <laughs> he like was slowly going for the officer's gun. <laughs> <laughs> but um, intrusive thoughts are fun. Yeah, like you always get them. They're when dangerous you're though. Or when like you go somewhere that's really high up mm-hmm. and it's like you can make it. Do it. Do it. You can do it. You'll land. <laughs> oh, so I finally figured out that um. My, like, bad vertigo is definitely genetic. Really? Yeah, because apparently my sister and brother also deal with it. Oh, wow. Because I was always curious of, like, why is it that when I look up at the sky, I get really dizzy? And when I look at tall buildings, I get really dizzy. And I realized, oh, my brothers do it, too, and my mom do it. Like, we all have some weird type of fucking, like, vertigo thing that we don't know why we have. Because we're also, like, terrified of heights, too, where we, if we look down at an extreme height, we get, like, really fucking dizzy. <laughs> My sister was expressing this because she was talking about that um, she's going to be going to like a uh, like a, a like a cruise soon, right? Mm. They're going to like a, one of those like Royal Caribbean cruises, oh, or whatever. Yeah. And apparently, like um, her, um, the family that she's going with, which is like uh, her fiance's side of the family, uh, they booked like a little like room that's got like a balcony. Oh, sweet! Yeah, yeah. So they were just like, oh yeah, you'll be able to go out there and look at the like the ocean and shit. And she's like, I'm not going out there. If I see that height, I'm gonna fall over. Like I'm gonna fucking pass out. And I was just like, well, the lucky the lucky thing is that oh, I told her I was like, you don't have to worry because you know those cruises stay by the shoreline. You're not gonna go out and see. No, the bullshit. They don't. What the fuck? Most of them, no, most of them just go down shorelines. Mm-hmm. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck are you talking about? The How carnival you- ones? 
Yeah, they go down to the fucking Bahamas and shit and the Mexico. They don't what? follow the shoreline, dude. I thought they did. Do you want the trip to be like two weeks longer? Uh, if you follow the shoreline, it's a lot of actually, like, it area is a, to cover. It's actually, she's actually going on a two-week trip. Yeah, but no, like it doesn't follow the shoreline. It goes from points to points. Because mm. if, tr- if you follow the shoreline, that's a lot of area to cover. They're cutting across, bro. Uh, if they're going to Mexico, you're passing all these. Is she ever going to be surrounded by complete blue? Yeah. Fuck. Dude, a lot. I can't do that. I couldn't do it, dude. That's my brother about that shit, dude. I'd, dr- I'd fucking, I'd, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't jump, but I'd, I'd be in that room all yeah. day. I'm so, I'm in here with my Nintendo Switch. You ain't going to get me out of yeah. this bitch. Like, what is it? Like, they've had people, like, and it's crazy, too, because before, like, the Navy, they had their, uh, uh, the, their, they call it the BDUs, the battle, mm-hmm. I think battle dress uniforms. Is that what they're called? I don't know. Someone's going to correct me on there. Yeah. Um, and uh, before, they, they've been really cool. They were cool looking. They were like these dark, like nice dark blue, blues, whites, and grays and stuff. Mm-hmm. They look really fucking cool. You're not going to see anyone in the fucking water wearing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you fall in wearing that shit, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm guessing you're not wearing it on the ship, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, you need to contrast the blue yeah. in order to see it. So you but then that's the problem. Like, like, if you contrast it, then you can see someone in the ocean. I guess that is true. Yeah, because what they do is at night on the ships, if there's any, uh, one, if they're doing stuff on the deck, mm-hmm. it's red lights only. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So because you can't see a red light from really far away, but if you're if you're like if this room is all red light, we could see it, and also you keep your night vision if it's a red light. Hmm. What they need is inflatable pants. <laughs> Pull the tab. I don't see why they haven't done something like that for the like Navy people. Like wear like a like because they wear jumpsuits on the flight deck, mm-hmm. and they're like, would it be that hard to install like a rubber ring that goes around the shoulders and the neck? There's probably some military people that will see this and be like, "You guys are fucking idiots." <laughs> well, no, I mean, shit. All you have to do is put the little inflatable in there, and then if you fall in the water, you actually. Tsk, 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 tsk. Yeah, there you go. Why haven't they invented a gun that shoots itself? <laughs> <laughs> World peace, that's why. <laughs> but yeah. And then they fucking made a... I mean, they made a magnetic gun on a ship deck that shoots a fucking piece of metal like a million miles away. All right, let's talk about foreign policy. Yeah. Um, what's going on in uh, fucking... What's going, been going on with this whole shipping crate thing? The shipping thing? Yeah, like I remember you mentioned about it like a little bit previously, oh, yeah. but fucking, we never uh, really... What the, they had bombed like a U.S. like shipping ship or something. Well, like they that? were bombing just a bunch of like random ships out like on the like a major like a uh, shipping line. I think it was uh-huh. um, a I, shipping I, line. I'm and... gonna dedicate like at least like ten minutes for Joe to get a little bit of politics in before I cut <laughs> him off. <laughs> I'll put more politics into this. Well, I mean, he tries to squeeze it in there. Wake up, people! <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, they um, what is it? Say that happened, and the U.S. was like, well, no. Yeah. And the U.K. was also like, mm, nah. <laughs> no, and, uh, no. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and uh, it was just like a joint Why must you operation. bomb these cargo ships as I enjoy this succulent Chinese meal? <laughs> <laughs> this is democracy matter first. <laughs> he was Australian, by the way. Oh, was he? Yeah. Nah, you can't tell between those fucks. You can, actually, and they'll fuck you up if you try to say they're the same. I guess that's true. I'd rather hang out with Australians, though. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're cool fun people. They're weird I've been, people. I've been getting so into, like, Australian punk rock. Mm-hmm. Australian punk rock is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like old school punk. Yeah, it's yeah. actually, like, inter- It's like Because, like, one. There's got one band that sounds like Social Distortion. Let's get one thing fucking straight. Punk started in America first. Did it? The Ramones were the first. Are you sure? They were the first that had that style. They're the first that had that sound, and then right. it, after that, the it got popularized in the UK because the UK went from uh, went from reggae to ska into punk. It was like a, it was like a, it so was ska was before punk. I think it was kind of like like hand in hand. I think like they kind of just considered ska also punk music. Mm. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's like because I know reggae has a big influence on punk rock, oh, yeah. uh, at least in the UK side, because that's where like the whole skinhead movement shit started. And this is like the non-racial skinheads. These are like yeah. the working class, like against like you know corporate interest as yeah. skinheads, the good kind, the good not, kind of skinheads, not the bad like American History X kind. Yeah, that was a good movie though. It was a good movie. Yeah. Although apparently the director got really mad about the, uh, about them changing the original ending. Did you ever hear about that? Of Danny getting shot? 
Huh? The brother getting shot at the end. Yeah. The original. That was the original ending? No, the original ending was actually um, him walking in on his uh, brother getting shot. And then after that, he finds the kid that shot him and kills him. Oh, cool. That'd be, that would have been a great ending. Yeah, but they apparently said that it was just too hard. What? They said they, they said that it would just like, uh, they, they thought it was too violent and it just would be like, oh, so you're t- saying that he didn't change. You reverted right back to being a racist. Because, I mean, that's the real life. I mean. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, a, what was it, for uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original yeah. one? The ending that everyone's seen where they uh, the black guy and the lady, the pregnant lady get on the ho- helicopter in the end and fly away and they don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. That was a hopeful ending because the black guy, like, he runs out and the music's all, like, upbeat and he's fucking punching I need zombies. a hero. <laughs> Pretty much, dude. Like, <laughs> I need it's a like hero. A, it's like a... <laughs> and he's just, like, <laughs> fucking, like, doing the fucking, like, uh, what's that game? Uh, not uh, Punch Out from fucking Super <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> But um, the original ending was uh, because he was down in the in the mall still while she was running away. He was, like, covering her to get out to the helicopter. Yeah. And you see him, like, there's a scene. He has the gun in his hand, and he's, like, just holding it close to his head like he's going to shoot himself. And then at the last second, they change the scene to where he shoots a zombie, and then he fights them, gets up the roof, and gets away. Uh, the original scene is he fucking shoots himself. You don't see it, but you see, like, a... Mm-hmm. And then the lady hears the gunshot, and she loses all fucking hope at that point, and she sees that the helicopter blades are already going, and she jumps into the helicopter blades to cut her head off. Damn. And that was supposed to be the ending, because it was supposed to be like, what's the point of going on if I'm not going to be able to do this on my own with yeah. the baby? And they were like, we can't show this to the American audience. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is about like certain people, but people hate the idea of not getting like a good ending. Fuck no, dude. But I'm like, that that makes a movie even like Better, more. Yeah. yeah, like there's some movies where I'm like, this I hated this ending, but it was necessary. Mm-hmm. It was it was a good cohesive story to do so. Mm-hmm. And there's some movies where like it takes me a minute to like actually uh, kind of enjoy it. Because there's a lot of it that I don't like up until, like, after I've watched it for me to really, like, think about, like, why didn't I like it? And then I realized, oh, wait, no, I did like this movie. It just made me feel a certain way when I was watching it. Yeah. A good example would be that fucking movie I watched not too long ago. It was um, um, Bones and All. It's the one about, like, the, the cannibal people. Like the It's got, like, Timothy Chalamet in it with, like, uh, this other girl. And basically, the whole story is about just them like running off together. They both have this weird thing of like oh, they I've seen the commercial they have to consume it, yeah. like flesh, whatever. And it um, it's a book, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And the ending is pretty fucked. But basically, like this one guy who had helped her early in the movie. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I mean, most people aren't gonna watch this fucking movie because it is kind of like annoying that Timothy Chalamet's the main dude. But it's also one of those movies where it's like it's not like the best film it's just interesting it's an interesting film i like the way it was directed though okay. it was d- directed in the sense of like it looked like it was filmed on like 90s equipment cuz it was it take pl- it took place in like the 90s era okay and it has like these moments that are kind of like beautifully like telegraphed or like some it's got beautiful like cinema photography and it gives you like this sense of like oh this is kind of romantic but in a fucked up twisted way kind of mm-hmm. thing and i did enjoy that but there's, you know, like the ending basically is like this guy that she had bumped into early in the movie had basically been stalking her for a long time and nice. found her again. He is also like one of these people that suffers from this cannibal disease. And uh, she basically uh, tie, uh, he traps her in her apartment. She's her and her romantic um, partner are trying to live like normal lives at this mm-hmm. point in the story. They're trying to have like children and they're trying to like just try to. Like adapt to like a, like a real society and just hide the fact that they like like have e this people. weird yeah, the e people yeah. whatever because that what they try to do is eat already dead people yeah because they the the they just need to eat flesh mm-hmm. so but they're trying not to kill people but they did kill somebody in the mid mid of the film in a really fucking weird way but I'll explain that later 
Um, but basically, this dude, he shows up. He fucking, like, attacks the girl. Timothy Chalamet's character walks in on him attacking her. He fights him back. He gets fucking stabbed. That that dude gets fucking killed. And then she's there, like, basically, like, I don't know what to fucking do. Like, we just killed a dude. I can't take him to the hospital because he's already been fucking stabbed. And he's basically telling her, like, like, you can make it on your own. But we need to disappear. Mm. So they can't find out about this. So she starts eating him. Oh, fun. And he, like, is almost, like, pleasured by it. And it's a very weird sequence because it's kind of... She eats like, him dick first? <laughs> no, it's just kind of, like, one of those, like, weird moments of, like, he's in pain, but he, like, understands the pleasure that comes into eating flesh. And she obviously, like, loves this man, but she has to eat him to get rid of the bodies. Why and then, she just kill him first? And then the movie ends with this... the the backdrop of that room and it's completely clean like not a speck of blood anywhere she basically ate both of them to completion because earlier in the movie <laughs> to completion yeah earlier in the, <laughs> earlier in the, <laughs> early in the movie they ran into other like people that have this hunger like thing yeah. right and they talked about like sometimes the hunger will get so intense after so many years you'll eat a person bones and all and they're like i've never heard of that and they're like, so she ate the both of the bones. Yeah, because she was like confused mm. because she was like bones. Why would you eat the bones? And then like she that, the bones. that hunger will get so intense you will eat everything. And apparently she did. Her teeth must have been fucked. But one of the funniest sequences I saw was like uh, in the middle of the film. There's a part where her and and Timothy Chalamet's character are just driving cross country. They're trying to find a place to like settle down and like actually have a normal life. And then she's like leaning her head on his shoulder and it's kind of romantic. And then she just goes, I'm hungry. And then it cuts away. And the next thing you know, they're at a carnival. And Timothy Chalamet's character is just walking around minding his own business. He's like smoking a cigarette. And he goes up to this guy who's like running a little booth, like one of those like, you know, throw the balls at the mm-hmm. cup kind of booths, right? And they're talking and they're just kind of like, he's kind of like semi flirting with the guy. And then the guy's just like, hey, if you want, I got some really good shit. If you're trying to get some weed, meet me at my car after you know, the carnival ends, whatever. And that's what happens. He meets up with him. They fucking share a joint together. And then they're just like, you want to have a little bit more fun? And they fucking walk into a cornfield together. And she's meanwhile in the back. It's like, obviously he's baiting the dude. He's I guess, honey potting him. Yeah, he's honey potting him. I guess he fucking knew the guy was gay, whatever. And then they walk him. So more than likely he's leading him into the cornfield. And you think he's going to wait till he gets a good moment till the guy's distracted. He's probably going to, you know, bonk him over the head or stab him or something, right? <laughs> So the girl's just waiting. She the, wait- girl, the girl gets fucking lost in the cornfield. Meanwhile, Timothy Chalamet is getting his fucking bussy door out. Let me ex- <laughs> let me explain. So she's waiting to see what's going to happen. And eventually she's just like, fuck it. I waited long enough. I'm going to go find him. She goes into like the same trail. She's like sneaking around the corn to try to see like where they may be. He walks up on him. He's behind the dude. And he's got him his arm around his head, right? Like this. And it kind of looks like he's, like, eating his neck or something. But, no, he's, like, he's just, I guess, like, kissing on his neck and stuff. And then she, like, peeks over. And the guy's still alive. And Timothy Chalamet's jacking him off. I was like, bro, you didn't have to go that far. Yeah, bro, you didn't have to do that. This almost seems like you wanted to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's what you see on her face. She's just like, what the fuck? Like, she, kind of, she, has this, she has this face of, like, what the fuck is he doing? We're supposed to kill this dude to eat him. And, and then, then you see her, like, what the fuck? She and then, pulls up the script. That's not in the fucking script. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as he turns around and sees her, as he's jacking this dude off, he's like, all right, now. And then he cracks his neck. And I'm like... Why, why did you, did you do that? Why did you jack him <laughs> off? Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Who wrote the scene? No, no one did. He was, like, over there to the producers, <laughs> like, no, it's going to work. Just just add the scene in there. But don't worry. Timothy, I need you to go in on this dick. I need you to jack him off. No, it's Timothy Chalamet being like, no, I need to do this. It's, it's for my, <laughs> it's it's for my, uh, I need to do this to I be a better do- actor. I know what I'm doing. I'm an I, actor. I was in Dune. Zendaya, work tight. <laughs> God, dude. He's, the girl's like, I'm not Zendaya. I'm just another light-skinned black girl. I'm like, oh, my bad. Oh, shit. Yeah. I thought you were Zendaya, too. I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of black friends, like Zendaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> he questions whether she's black. <laughs> she might be Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. <laughs> 
But yeah, go check out Bones and All. <laughs> that movie. Specifically for that scene. No, there's a lot of other sequences in the movie that He's are attacking act- other guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There's other sequences in there that are interesting and the kind of fucked up. Like the whole beginning of this movie is weird because it's about the girl before she meets like um, uh, Timothy Chalamet's character, right? The predator. And no, but basically, she has a father. And the father's like basically like homeschooling her, mm. or no, no, he's not homeschooling her. She's going to school, but anytime that she gets back home, she has to stay in the house. She has to stay in the fucking house, and she's always like in this weird moment of like, why am I here? Like I, I don't, I don't, I want to go like be with like other people. Mm. Why can't I just have like a normal like childhood with everybody yeah. else? And he's like, no, and he like every night locks her in her room. And you're kind of, at first you're kind of thinking like is he like abusing her or something is he keeping, yeah. keeping her trapped? Well, she sneaks out the window, and she goes to a friend's house for a sleepover. Oh, that's the trailer where she like bites the fingers off. Yeah, she bites her finger and then rips all the meat off of it, and then she just starts like chewing on it. And the girls are all screaming and shit. And then she's basically like walking back to her house, and she's like in a weird like mental daze because mm. she doesn't know what the fuck she just did. She just has blood all over her mouth, and she's knocking on the door. And the dad opens the door, and it's like fuck, like you got out again, didn't you? And basically, he's again? like, yeah. Oh, so wow. apparently, he's been taking care of her for a very long time. So basically, the story goes is he got with a woman who was hiding the fact that she had this like oh. disease, and then whenever the whenever they had the baby. She abandoned him and with the baby, and then as he raised the baby, he noticed that the baby, like, or as the child grew up, kept biting people, and eventually got to the point where she was, like, ripping flesh off of people, and he thought, like, oh, she just fucking has some kind of mental disability, and then she, he eventually got letters from his former, like, partner saying that, like, look, this is hard to explain, but... We have a disease, mm. and a lot of people have this disease. We live amongst the people. So it's a like disease. It's like, it's it's the, just the, the trailer made it look like it was like, oh, we're like a like monsters, but we look like humans or some shit like that. It's yeah. some. It's kind of like that. It's kind of. It's not. I wouldn't say it's a disease, but it's almost like a group of a grouping of people have this innate instinct of needing to eat flesh, mm. and they can't control it. It's like an insatiable hunger. It's kind of like being a vampire that needs blood. You always eventually will get to a point where you crave human flesh. Like Timothy Chalamet, who needs to jack off to the court fields. <laughs> it's weird because like, he talks about like um, there's like there's other plot points in the in the in the thing where things do get a very dark in this whole series and and um, you certain you soon find out that not all of them are susceptible to this thing because mm. he um, later reveals that he ate his own father. And I guess he jacked off his dad and then ate him. Oh, Timothy <laughs> Jones? Yeah. No, but apparently... The weird he, father's day. Apparently their dad was... <laughs> apparently his dad was abusive. Uh, and then eventually he found out that the reason he's abusive is because he had this inner turmoil about the fact that he eats flesh. And then he was just hoping that his kids wouldn't have it. It turns out Timothy Chalamet did end up getting the same thing, but his daughter didn't. Because hmm. he had two kids, a daughter and a son. The son did get that innate gene whatever Mm -hmm. but the girl didn't so the girl didn't even know that he had like this weird insatiable hunger disease whatever um i don't even know why i'm talking about this movie but yeah you just got onto it i know but the 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 fact about the movie is just like it's such a weird movie but it's not bad it's just kind of like you know you've ever watched a movie that's like weird but you're just kind of like i dig it a little bit yeah god what movie was it? it was a recent one i know um a good example would be like, um, what the fuck is it? I, I've seen this movie before. I mean, to be honest, a lot of horror movies are like that. There's a lot of horror movies that are like, they're not great, but they're interesting. Yeah. Oh, what is that one? Uh, have you seen Possessor? No. Bro, that movie's fucking weird, but it's good. Yeah. It's um, these people that are like, um, what they do is they kind of like hijack people's bodies. Mm. By like uh, going to like this machine, I think they're like they're assassins, so they hijack people's bodies to use to kill other people or mm-hmm. to do a, do things. And what happens is when you when you link to someone, you have to keep reminding yourself that you're not that person. Yeah, because you start bleeding your minds together, and 
you start like forgetting who you are. So you have to keep going back and getting like checked and shit like that. It's crazy. It was a good movie. Yeah. And like, it's a lot of like body horror stuff in it. It's by, um, what's that guy's name? I forgot his name, but he does. He's really famous for doing body horror movies. Mm. Um, and there's one part where you see like the main lady and she's, her face is like fucking melting and shit. It's yeah. crazy, dude. Um, that's a good movie. It's on Hulu, I think. Okay. But, uh, no, I like movies that end bad. Those are always good. Yeah. I Unless you, uh, sometimes it's just kind of like, I, I, I don't know where it's going. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, I remember, uh, in high school we were like, um, assigned to read the giver book. And, um, have you ever read that book? The, the giver? giver? No. Yeah. It's basically like the, they, they, they they all grow up in this weird society where they're basically like inside a dome and everything's like black and white and they mm-hmm. have like people that have to have specific roles. It's almost like a perfect society, but things are very eerie and weird, yeah. right? And eventually, uh, they have to assign one person the role as the giver. And basically, what the giver does is basically they have to learn everything that is outside of their like like world, right? So basically they're given the memories from the previous giver of everything that's outside. So they learn about like famine and war and destruction and they learn what color is and what music and culture and all that shit is. Mm -hmm. They're given basically the knowledge of the world, but it is both, both, uh, a great gift, but also like a curse kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And the book basically ends to this point where you, you, he starts seeing what is going on. You certainly learn, you soon learn that, Every babe, every person that lives in the society is almost perfect to a T. And it's almost weird because he's just like, I've seen what's out there and things aren't supposed to be like this. Why are things black and white? Why are things like this? And you soon start to realize where, wh- like, there's this whole thing about like every, some people are like assigned positions of like giving birth to people, mm-hmm. right? They're impregnated and they have babies and it's almost like a, almost like a, feels like an assembly line mm-hmm. they're not they're not assigned to their birth mothers they're assigned to a family because mm-hmm. he at one point is like with his family and he's just like i was assigned to this family they're technically not my biological mother and father and then he asks his mother do you love me and the mom's just like what do you mean do i love you i mean i'm very fond of you that's what you mean yeah and he's just kind of like you know he's very like awful. Like the book is really good and interesting, and it like it has like this cool like kind of like social commentary kind of like okay. concept to it. But there's one point where basically he realized, oh wait, if a baby's ever born like with a mouth like 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 kind of off, like maybe different colored eyes or the hair looks weird, or maybe the baby might be a little sickly, mm-hmm. they, it goes into it goes down to a different shoot. And basically, the shoot leads to a fucking furnace. And he fucking figures out, like, oh, they're murdering imperfection. They're getting they're, they're getting rid. Because there's a point where whenever um, there's an area where people are assigned to, like, take care of the elderly. When they mm-hmm. reach a certain age, they have to, like, you know, put on a specific type of suit. And then they basically go into a shoot that's supposed to be, like, the end for them. They say, like, oh, they're going to, like, a retirement place. But... Mm-hmm. No, they're going to a furnace. They're going to a furnace. Nice. So it's it's happening both to the 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 young and it's also happening to the old. And you realize this is fucked up. But to them, they don't know what what the, what the reality is because they've been stripped of the reality. And the book the book ends with him taking a baby that was going to be thrown into a furnace, and he escapes. He finds a way to exit the the dome, mm-hmm. and then he's out there, and he's on the run. And what you learn is like, oh, that's a big no-no. And they actually have like fucking like, like, you know, like fucking fighter jets searching for him and shit. They're trying to fucking gun him down. They're like, no, you, the, like, what's going on here can't reach the outside wherever the fuck it is. Mm. And he has to do a, he has to do some predator shit and cover himself in mud and to make sure they can't find him to the heat seeking shit. Cause mm-hmm. he knows how all that shit operates. And eventually the book ends to where like, I got far enough to where they can't track me anymore. I've been on the like on the one for a couple of days. I don't know where I'm heading, but I just hope that we can get somewhere where things can be better for both of us and that we can finally like, you know, actually see what like this world's all about. And it ends right there. Nice. You don't know where he ends up or think if things turn out good for him, but it's kind of like you hope he does. Well, it's like the uh, if you ever get a chance to read it or if you have read it, uh the, uh, the road 
by Cormac McCarthy. Yeah, wasn't yeah. that also a movie? Yeah, the movie's really good too. I think. Uh, my my opinion is the movie's good. It did a good job with uh, what the book was. Who's Watch the, the movie; it's good. Who's the main character in that movie? Uh, they just call him. Uh, he's just the uh, the father. Oh uh, yeah, but was it wasn't he played by Viggo Mortensen? Yeah. yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I remember seeing like the trailer for it. Right now, do the book, dude. Oh my god, it's 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 one of those where it's like uh, it, they they don't explain what happened. All it says like he's like there was a great fire. Uh, there's ash falling from the sky. Uh, the sun's blotted out most of the time, so it's always cold and it's getting colder. Mm-hmm. So what you think is like, oh, a nuclear apocalypse, a nuclear war happened or something. And um, it's just him and his son trying to survive. Mm. And bro, dude, this is fucking dark. It's a good book. There's a lot of books I need to actually read, but I'm such I'm so bad at reading yeah. because of just my watch t- the movie. You'll get the gist span. of the book. Yeah. I want to read that Tender as Flesh. Bro, book. it's so fucking good. Yeah, Denise told me she read it, and she was like, she hated it because she hates, like, that type oh, of, like, material. That book, dude. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I know it's good because it upset her. Mm-hmm. I know it's good because <laughs> it, no, That's what I'm saying. Like, she loves... Yeah. Denise is a huge consumer of Slice of Life. She loves Slice of Life yeah. shit. She, like, I remember one time she got really into this whole thing, uh, this whole anime called, like, My Big Boyfriend. And it's literally, like... Like, think about the biggest goonish-looking-ass anime mm-hmm. character. And his whole thing is like, I'm actually very sensitive, and I'm scared to talk to girls. <laughs> and he yeah. meets a girl That's funny. who's, like, super, like, cutesy and, like, super sweet. And he's, like, infatuated with her. And the whole story is basically him, like, trying to, like, have a normal relationship with this girl. That's funny. <clears throat> and, um, God, yeah. it's so difficult. Um, I'm having a hard time talking right now because yeah. my nose is still burning from my allergies. I'm like, yeah. fuck. Uh, no, that book, Tenders of Flesh, is good. I just listened to two because Spotify, if you have the premium, you uh-huh. get like 10 hours of free like audiobooks now. Yeah. So I just used it to listen to some books on the way to work and mm-hmm. back. Uh, I listened to one called Laws of the Skies. Mm-hmm. It's a French book that they translated to English. Uh, bro. That book, it was it was one of the few books I've ever had to like pause. Oh, God damn it! What the fuck? And like take a second. What was the name of the book? Laws of the Sky. Okay. And it's about these kids. Uh, uh, it's very misleading because at first you think it's going to be ta- like following the the older like uh, he's like their teacher and he's taking all the kids out uh, to, like a camping weekend trip. Yeah. Uh, like somewhere in the in the woods now, over in France somewhere. And it's following him, and he's talking about all the kids in the beginning of the book being like, oh, that's, you know, whatever his name is. He's, you know, all the kids like him. He's very popular. And then this girl, she's, you know, like her parents are super nice. I get along with them just fine and blah, blah, blah. This kid's a little shit and blah, blah, blah. And he talks about one kid. He's like, this kid always gets puts me on edge. He's just weird. He always has – he's always doing something fucking weird. And um, the kid does something, and he gets in trouble. So later – Later on, like in the beginning of the book, he uh, he tells him, like, hey, uh, since you weren't listening to us adults, I'm sorry, you're going to have to sit out the story time. Because they're all, like, I think, like, maybe first grade age. Okay, they're children. They're fucking little kids. Little adolescent yeah. children. Not even adolescents, dude. Oh, it's just babies? Yeah, it's they're, like, fresh out of kindergarten and going to the first grade. Okay, much. so that would probably be, like, what, like, six-year-olds, yeah, maybe? maybe. Five, five or, six or six-year-olds, whatever. Yeah. And, um... He's telling him a story called The Law of the Sky, and mm-hmm. it's about a rat who wants to, who sees all those birds, all the birds in the air flying through the air, and he's like, one day I will fly through the air, and the rat's like, cool. And then the the, the rat asks a bird, he's like, oh, hey, bird, um, how can I learn how to fly? And the bird's like, well, first, I mean, you can't. Your, 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 your rule in the, your role in this world is to be on the ground. You're on the ground, and we're in the sky. Mm. And the and the rats, or the mouse is like, well, eh. I'm still going to try to fly. So he like does things to like stretch his arm skin out and everything to make himself little wings. And he turns himself into a bat basically. Yeah. Cause a, a mouse looks like a bat. kind of. Mm-hmm. And then he starts flying around and the birds are like, Oh cool. Well, Hey, since you're, you know, in the sky now, we're going to have to teach you about the laws of the sky. And then they like, they beat him down. The, the birds beat the mouse down and they tell him, like, laws of the sky is all the food in the sky is for the birds, no one else. Another, another law is um, we're only allowed to see what's out here. So you can't see. 
uh, what's in the sky. And then they pluck his eyes out. He's telling these kids this fucking story, dude. Yeah. And then um, they put him, he's like, you'll, you'll no longer be allowed to see the sun. You will never hunt in the skies during the day. You will only be at night. So a bat, you know? Yeah. And they throw him into a cave. And before he gives like the final law, I forget what the final law was of the sky. Um, they say it later in the book. Um, the camp, the, the teacher guy is like, and then I notice all the kids and they're not looking at me. They're focused on something behind me. And I'm like, but you're missing the story. And then I feel something hit me on the back of the head and I slump forward and fall to my face. And then it cuts over to one of the kids, uh, in the, in the little, in the crowd of kids mm-hmm. and the kid that he put in the tent as punishment fucking snapped. And he grabbed a rock and hit the teacher on the back of the head with it and then like pretty much knocked him out. But then he gets on top of him and starts bashing his skull in to the point where he's covered in bits of brain and everything. And like, that's how the book fucking starts. Oh shit. The rest of the book is all the kids scatter and it tells you how each of them died. And yeah, like there's one where like these two girls, they were lost together and they made it. They finally like, cause they're little kids. They don't know how to tr- like go through the woods or anything. Mm-hmm. They're, they're on a, they went off the trail and they're lost. They finally made it to like the side of a road. It was nighttime at that point and they see a truck coming. So they're waving at it. And then it cuts over to the truck driver's point of view. And he says he felt a thump and he's like, fuck, I hit another hog. So he gets out of the car, looks around. He sees a little bit of blood on the bumper. He's like, oh, well, I probably crawled away somewhere to die, whatever. He gets back, he cleans it off, gets back in the truck and leaves. Cuts back to the girl's point of view. They jumped into the middle of the road because they see the truck coming. And then they're like, well, why isn't it slowing down? And then they both get hit. One flies over to the side, hits a tree, breaks her back, dies immediately, falls down a ravine. Driver's not going to see her. The other one breaks her neck and she gets tum- thrown back into the woods where she just came out of. But since she broke her neck, she's not able to move or talk. She's completely paralyzed. And mm-hmm. she just lays there and suffocates to death while she sees the driver wiping her blood off of the bumper, gets back in the truck and drives away. What the fuck? And then another one, these this group of kids are working together and they're all really hungry because they've been out there for like like a day or two. Because little kids, when they get hungry, they're like, no, I don't want to do anything. So then they start thinking, like, well, we're in the woods. Plants, like, fruit grows, grows in the woods. So there's probably, like, you know, apples and oranges and bananas out here. And they're in the middle of France. They don't know. They're like, yeah. they all they know is fruit comes from trees. Bananas come from trees. Maybe there's bananas out here. And then they find some berries, and they think they look like a, a kind of berry that's over there. But it's a poisonous berry, but they don't know it. Mm. The narrator's telling you, unfortunately, these berries are extremely poisonous. And if you eat a lot of them, then you're fucked. And then the next part when you go back to their story, they're just on the ground, like, bubbling at the mouth. While two of them, who didn't eat them, because they were like, we shouldn't eat these. They're sitting there trying to comfort their friends while they're dying. Mm. And, then it's, and then the author does a good job of like going through the thought process of the kids being like how would a kid how a kid's mind would probably cope through all of this yeah. and all it was he was like he was like i don't understand i don't understand i want my mom i want to go home i want my bed i want my stuffed doll i i don't want to be here i just want to go home why aren't my parents here to come get me yeah and it's just like oh my god he did such a good job damn and so, so none of them survive nope Finally, what happens in the end is only two of them are left. The one that went fucking nuts and started killing a few of them off. Because mm-hmm. he did kill a bunch of them. And he fucked some people up. And there was the other adults there. He killed the adults, too. And uh, the other one... How was, does a kid, like, fucking... Because he tricked the adults. Well, one lady, she was trying to, like... She got lost in the woods, too, mm-hmm. uh, before. Because two of them left because one of them got sick. And she, while she was coming back, I, it got too dark, and she got off the trail, and she got lost. So she had no idea any of this was happening. So the kid that snapped uh, was just like wandering through the woods and he saw the lady. So he put on a fake, he threw the fake tears on, said like uh, the teacher went crazy and all the, everyone ran away. And she's like, oh no, I'm so sorry. And she hugs him and everything like that. And she's sitting there with him. And like that later that night, he, she says something and it rubs the kid the wrong way. And he just fucking slits her throat. Like, he, oh, like, shit. goes in for a hug and just, like. Damn. Yeah. And then afterwards, while she's sitting there bleeding out, she has no strength, he just starts gutting her. Because he wants to see what, like, if it's the same as when his dad, like, goes and shoots a boar and brings it home. Mm. Yeah. 
It, it gets really fucking like in detail. So it's just a kid, kid with severe schizophrenia. Not he just snaps like. Oh, uh, they don't know why. No. So he probably just has like some kind of like. Yeah, and then the, in the end, like the fi- the kid like. He um. How the fuck does he die? The the kid with the the evil kid. Yeah. So uh, the other the one kid that survived that survived to the end almost. He, like, gets in a final fight with the kid. And the kid that's, like, went crazy, he found, like, all the food from the camp. He ate all the food, so no one else had food. Everyone mm-hmm. else is starving, and he's just like, oh, I'm fine. Uh, he gets in, like, a final fight with him, uses, like, that last bit of strength that he has to push him, and he falls and, like, breaks his, like, leg or something, and he knocks him out with, like, a rock. So what he does is, well, he doesn't want to kill anyone because that's not who he is. So he grabs him and, like, ties him to a pole, that's there, uh, there at the camp. So he can like leave him there while he goes and gets help and tells the police what he did and everything like that. So mm-hmm. that we, you know, he can stop the kid from chasing after him. So he walks away and starts looking for the road. Cause he's like, well, I'm at camp. I remember we walked from this way. So I'm going to go this way. And he starts going that way. In the, the middle of the day, the next day, apparently there's been a boar going around eating just the scraps of food. And what you what they tell you is the the bad kid had some candy bar still in his pants leg, and the boar smells it, and the boar goes over and starts trying to rip his pants leg up, and he cuts his leg open because boar's tusks are like razor sharp. Mm-hmm. So then blood goes everywhere, and the boar tastes the blood, and he's like, "Oh, meat!" And he starts eating the kid's legs. Oh shit! And then the kid starts screaming and stuff, and the boar kind of pulls him off of the uh, like rips him off of the pole, and starts like trampling him and biting him and shit, and the pig like grabs his face and bites off the front of his face. Oh, the shit. kid's still alive. Damn. Out of, like, sheer, like, just spite. And then the pig just starts, like, eating his, like, insides and everything while the kid's still alive. And it goes into extreme detail. Like, that's the part I was like, all right, hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, let's go back into it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that book was fucking crazy. <sighs> it's crazy how some books will, like, this, like go into... Like that much detail, mm-hmm. it makes me think a lot of like the whole like Lord of the Flies, but the, but that's oh, a I miss that book though. That's a different concept though. But they that that's also kind of like what happens if you like kids are just like yeah. you know that book that was a good one. For some reason, uh, Lord of the Flies made me think of like um, I thought of Lord of the Flies when I saw this one clip where like they did this like this whole game show where it's like kind of like a Survivor series thing. Was it the guys and the girls? The guys and the girls where all the girls were just suffering and the guys yeah. were just like having the the it's time a of their trip, life. Bro, they're over there catching fish. They killed an alligator. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're having so much meat. All of them are getting like lean and cut, yeah. and all the girls are like, "We've dropped a lot of weight, so I guess that's good." And they're like, "No, that's not good. That's not good at all." But like, they finally get pulled. You see, yeah. like the there's like another clip where the producers are on there is like, "So you all have lost a significant amount of weight, and you're you don't have any clean water to drink." Uh, we're just gonna have to stop this on the side. Yeah, they're talking about like how immediately they started turning on each other, mm-hmm. and they're shot, like, like, but the dudes were all like, "Dude, we're having the." Yeah, this, fucking best time. But my favorite scene is they're all like on the beach, just hanging out, <laughs> like they're just chilling out. Some of them are in the water, and then you see one of them come up with a spear. It's like I caught a fish, and they're like, ah! <laughs> and then they're like, we have so much food that it's starting to go bad. <laughs> 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 and, they're sh- and then they're sharing it with like the camera guys and shit too. Like they're like, hey, you want to try some fish? And the camera guys like, oh shit, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. And then there was another one that was kind of like that. It was um, uh, they had the guys and the girls split up, and um, they did it multiple times. There was one time where the guys fucking flourished, and the women suffered a little. Uh, it just depends on what people you get out there. Yeah. And then there's another one where the guys were all fighting because they were all trying to just be the alpha, and the women uh fucking like made like this amazing hut that was off the ground they had food they made mm-hmm. like a way to get clean water every day it was fucking crazy yeah so what they would do in this one is after like a certain amount of like uh like a week or two or something like that uh they would send people from each team over to the other team mm. so there was the one that the the guys were like doing great on and the women weren't two guys were sent from that side to the women's side and two women were sent to this side and immediately the two women on this side, they didn't want to do shit. They were yeah. like, well, you guys already have all the food, and you already kind of figured it out, so we'll just stay here and just, you know, try to figure stuff out here. And they were, like, making, like, hats out of, like, palm fronds and 
Mm. Stuff like that. It's like, I get it. A hat will be helpful, but go get some fucking water. I'm like, <laughs> God damn. And then on the other side, uh, when the two guys that went to the women's, the guys were like, oh, so uh, uh, where do y'all get your clean water from? And they're like, oh, we've just been drinking out of here. And it's like this dirty ass fucking puddle of water. Oh, God. And they're like, there's a stream like in the woods. You know that, right? And Did they're this- like, oh, we haven't really gone and looked. And I'm like, okay, what uh, what food do you have? Do you have any like the coconuts uh, that are on the island? They're like, oh, there's coconuts here? <laughs> and they made the two dudes. The two dudes built shelters, got food, got the water and everything. And then they were fucking complaining about it. They were like, oh, this fish looks off. And the guys were like, cook it like what the fuck <laughs> and they didn't even have a fire uh, yeah it was just like oh my god yeah it's yeah. One of the- it's fucking ridiculous and then the other one like i said they tried it again and the guys were just like every single one of them were just beatheads they all wanted to be like king on the island and shit and they were all just fighting each other and shit yeah yeah i'm gonna go hunt a boar with my bare hands <laughs> i'm like- gonna fucking hit it with my ding dong <laughs> <laughs> i love like those little like challenge like kind of shows and stuff, but they do get a little repetitive. Mm-hmm. I know, um, but some of them are kind of interesting. I know uh, I I've been occasionally like watching like Mr. Beast videos and some of the shit that he does. What, I saw one yesterday with uh, me and my wife were watching. It's like um, this guy. Um, they so they bought a whole entire grocery store and they basically put a guy in there and they wrote they drew like a red line around the store and they're like like for every day that you spend in this grocery store you'll get a uh, 10 grand uh, and you can stay here as long as you want. But the only caveat is while you're here, we're, like we'll bring you the money once a day that the, you've earned for that day. But you also have to um, scan items equaling that amount. So, you know, so the first day it was easy. He just like sold all, like all the box TVs and then he mm. was able to get 10 grand out of that. And then like he, you'd be surprised how much shit is actually like pretty like one day for like ten grand, he scanned all the Hallmark cards. Every single Hallmark card eventually equaled up to ten grand. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then you know, and he like that's how much money's in a fucking grocery store. Yeah. And then um, he made it all the way to forty five. He made he he went forty five days, so he won four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Damn, dude. Yeah, and the main reason why he decided to like because he was trying to go for five uh, five hundred. He still needed like five more days to go, yeah. but he said at that point, like, like the grocery store went to a bunch of stuff to like very small stuff, like just like all the necessity stuff, mm-hmm. and then not just that, but like he had gone like forty five days without seeing his wife or his kids, <laughs> so he was just like, I'm ready to fucking like. End I don't know. It. I know it's like it must be different when you have a kid or something like that too, mm-hmm. but I know our wives would be like, "You're gonna stay in that fucking store." <laughs> Until there's nothing left in that store. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I told her, but I was like, but think about that, man. Think about, like, what's the longest time that you've been away from your wife since you've, like, been together? I think, like, two weeks. Really? Yeah. Damn. For me, it's literally only been, like, a couple of days. Yeah, because, uh, like, she went, She had to go to, uh, like, do, like, a business trip and, like, had to go to, uh, she had to go to France. It was before we got married. Okay. Like, right before, like, the the month before. She had to go to France for one week, and then when she got back, she immediately had to go to Chicago for, like, a trade show. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, like, two weeks. And I had to, like, finalize a few things for, like, the wedding and everything. And yeah. I was kind of like, oh, uh, all right, cool. I got I, your notes. I think the longest I've been away from my wife since we've been together was, like, three days. Yeah. Because uh, she went on a three-day trip with, like, uh, some um, – friends of hers like to a beach trip mm-hmm. and then before that it was like one day i remember the day before our wedding we we're like we're gonna spend a whole day without each other and just kind of like you know you know do our thing i'm yeah. that, that was the day that i wrote my my valves okay so you know i spent a whole day just working on them just kind of like writing them and thinking about like you know like like what to write what to tell her you know because we, we didn't do them publicly we did them in private yeah. and we just did like a photo op for that part she still has them too yeah, we do too. Yeah, she. Uh, I actually wrote mine on paper. She wrote hers on her phone, but then after the fact, she like rewrote them on paper yeah. so she could have them. And um, you know, it was like one of those cool moments. But yet, I, I do think about that a lot. I can't last 
longer than a certain amount of time before I'm like I'm. There's a pill for that. I hate being <laughs> I hate being alone. No, yeah, like I was. What was it? Was the like the third day? I was just like the kid in the window, just like. Hello. <laughs> I'm all alone. Well, that's the thing. Without companionship, do you get really bored? You know what would be worse if you yeah. didn't have pets? No, yeah, fuck, dude. I would have gone crazy. Because, like, I, I was thinking about that, and it's like the times that I have been alone for a long period of time, I still have my dogs. I yeah. still have my cats. If I didn't have that, I would just be in a house by my. I would be like phone calling friends, which yeah. is like the weirdest thing to do at this age. Just be like, Hey dude, what you up to? Yeah. Like, and then when you call someone, they're like, are you about to fucking kill yourself? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> oh my God. I, I've gotten scared of that a couple of times. Yeah. Not, not for me personally, but I've gotten a phone call from a friend where I'm like, I haven't talked to this guy in a long time. I hope everything's okay. And you'll talk to them. like, yeah, man, I just, uh, you know, I'm passing through town just seeing uh, what you're up to. If you want to chill or something, I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, no, totally, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, yeah, where, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, right, uh, I'm at this bridge right now, just staring at the water. It looks very tempting. <laughs> looks solid, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's kind of cold out here, so I wore six sweaters. <laughs> I wore my ankle weights, you know, for those exercising. <laughs> I wonder oh, if I can God. balance on this edge. <laughs> it's like, stay right there. I've almost <laughs> fallen like twice. <laughs> uh, it's like the water's calling me. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just got nothing. <laughs> uh, I love that. Uh, there's that uh, some uh, like uh, streamers and shit. Uh, one guy was asking, was like, hey, uh, would you guys be there if I really need, uh, like if I called you in one day and I was like, I really need you there. And they're like, no, 100% no. He's like, I hope you call me so I can ignore that call. <laughs> He's like, I hope you're going through something really tough right now. <laughs> uh, and one of them was like, I hope I missed that phone call. That would have changed the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, I don't even what I was asking, but goddamn guys. <laughs> yeah, but those kind of answers are like the yeah. best answers, you know. I remember, um, I remember uh, friends need that. Whenever yeah. they go through like a tough time, they really do that. Um, because like I remember, I had a buddy who was really close to this girl that he was gonna um, like. He was really close to her, and they had talked about like they're gonna start dating in the summertime, mm -hmm. whenever school had ended. But like shortly before the summer even like started, she took her life. Mm. You know, she. Um, you know, you need to add some sad music to your sound panel over there for <laughs> no, 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 do, no. Whenever we do these stories, <laughs> and I remember he was like really heartbroken about yeah. it. He was like super. Apparently, she had left him a note, and he got to read it, and he was just like uh, fucking dude. heartbroken. It was it was bad, and he, you know, he was fucking miserable. And I remember it had been a while. I had gave him some time to you know like reflect on it and on it, all that shit, you know. And I could, but I could tell, like you know, you felt that energy of sadness. And eventually, he we finally all met up together. And I had to break the ice. I had to break the ice. So I was just like, damn, dog, she didn't want to date you that bad. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he bursted out laughing. That's, yeah, that's And good. he was like, I needed that. Yeah. I fucking needed that. And I'm like, you have to do that. You yeah. have to be able to break them out of that fucking, like, mindset. But just getting, like... <sighs> I remember it was funny because <laughs> a couple of months later he started dating a girl who was also like she killed a, herself too. A, no, she was all she was a she was a a blonde girl mm -hmm. and the girl he like was about to date was also blonde and I was just like what the fuck dude do you like break out a photo of her when you're fucking that girl and you're just like she's still here baby <laughs> <laughs> from the grave you keep calling her by the wrong name <laughs> God that'd be fucking terrible dude. Yeah, we gave him so much like shit about it, and then you know, uh, I remember when he um, when when he was going off to basic before he like um, well, when he was still like in training and shit yeah. for like the army, we went to go visit him. You could tell that he was fucking like exhausted and tired. He was like kind of like, I think this was a mistake, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the movies. He was giving us that look of like fuck, you know. <laughs> He's like blink twice for uh, if you need help. Uh huh. Oh, three times. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> and um, I remember we went out to eat to, like, a restaurant, right? And he was there with, like, his parents and, like, his grandparents. And then we were also there. We were just, you know, fucking having, like, a dinner together, right? And then at one point, you know, you just got kind of silence. And I was like, I hate silences, so I have to say something. 
And I was just like, yeah, this trip, this uh, this visit's cool and all, but God, Chris won't shut up about the army. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was just shaking his head like this fucking asshole. And then his grandma was just like, are any of y'all going to try to join the military? And then I was just like, hell no. <laughs> so I'm not stupid. <laughs> Uh, that's always fun to do. Uh, but respect to all the boys out there who are fucking keeping this nation safe. Or at least they think they are, but, you know, like. <laughs> Way to shit on them still. <laughs> you know what? You guys are doing okay. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 759. Shout out to the army. So Shout out to the army. Like, you guys are pretty close to being, like, Marines, but, you know. Like, but you, you, you just need to eat more crayons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and love men. <laughs> hey, but. Hey, if for any army people that feel like they made a mistake, at least you're not in the National Guard. That's 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 where the real what was the weekend warriors. Yeah. <laughs> the, I remember one time this one kid we used to go to school with used to always um, wear um, a National Guard backpack, and we're like, "Are you gonna join the National Guard?" And he's like, "No, my dad's in the National Guard." It's like, "Oh, your dad's gay." <laughs> <laughs> Got him! Woo! <laughs> Oh, God. I hated uh, the fucking... Uh, I remember just the ROTC kids in high school. Uh -huh. Like, I, I did ROTC for a semester. Just fun. For funsies. It was fun. It was great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought of another one. I used to work with a co-worker who was in the National Guard. I was like, you used to be in the National Guard? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, when did you transition to a man? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? But, no, yeah, like, ROTC kids. Like, I, I had a few ROTC kids uh, that were, like, friends of mine and cool. They were yeah. cool as shit. But then some of them were just getting way too fucking into it. Like, hey, bro, we're still in high school, man. Yeah. Like, you can't legally own a gun. You can't go to war. Mm -hmm. Like, also, you, you're a fucking idiot. Like, you can't <laughs> read a map. I can read a map better than you. Yeah. I can clean a rifle. You you can't, dude. You're on the, you're on the spectrum, bud. <laughs> There's just the people that are just way too into it. And they're like, I'm a future. There's the, the video of the, the kid being like, I'm a future uh, army, army person. It's like, what? Okay, cool. Yeah. Good for you, man. Like, who gives a shit? But yeah. Uh, but I had a buddy out in Houston. He was a Marine. Uh, just sucks so much cock, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. He, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? I was there. He sucked mine. <laughs> <laughs> God, he domed me so hard, man. <laughs> Best head I ever had. <laughs> yeah. My toes curled up and everything. <laughs> oh, no, my God. But, uh, <laughs> fucking, like. <laughs> he was it was cool we would always go hang out together he drank like motherfucker we always drank like crazy like, mm -hmm. I, I, I drank a lot when i was in houston and yeah. then i met hannah and that kind of calmed me down um but uh it was just like we were, we were just matching like meathead like energy like energy yeah like he was like marine meathead and i was at the time like going hard in the gym trying to get real strong so i was gym meathead going on and um like I went over to his place and we play video games and we get like. If this becomes a there. clip. A lot of people are gonna be like, "Bullshit!" <laughs> no, he's not. He'll, if he so no, trust me. When you when, when you were in Houston, you were pretty like built. No, yeah. Like, cause you were you were you were taking that pretty seriously for like a whole year. I was taking it seriously for a while. Yeah, cause I yeah, remember then you I hurt my leg. Yeah, you yeah. came. I remember you came to visit me when you came back. To like you know see your parents. Yeah, and I ripped the door off the hinges. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just remember you came through and you were like. Yeah, you were, you were I was just, squared. Up. I was squared up. You were all the time, squared. Bro. You were squared up, like just walking around. Yeah, and you're just. Yeah, I think it was all that just that meathead potential inside of me, dude. <laughs> and when Han I don't understand how <laughs> Han I do not understand how Hannah found me attractive. Yeah, because <laughs> I was just like a fucking asshole. Dude. <laughs> I was at the gym, like I worked at the gym that I worked out at. Yeah, and uh, there'd be times where like I'm clocked in. But I'm over there working out, and people are just walking into the gym. <laughs> no, I'm like, you, you sign in? You sign in? <laughs> They're like, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be times, like, they got mad at me because I brought a bunch of the weights into, like, the area mm -hmm. where the desk is. And I was just like, hey, what's up, man? And I would just drop that shit on the concrete floor and crack it. It was fun. Oh, but, my um, God. No, yeah, like, I went over to my Marine buddy's house, and I told him a bunch of times, like, because when we were drinking, he would tell me a lot of shit that would happen. Yeah. Like, that he saw over there. And he was like, I don't know, man, I just feel, you know, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Like, I don't know why I'm still here. Like, I had friends that didn't come back. And I was like, hey, man, let's not do that right now. <laughs> we're drinking. Yeah. Uh, but then I would talk to him and be like, it, like, you need to get some help, man. Like, like you, you're talking to me, and I'm here for you. Uh, I'm not a professional, though, man. Like, you need professional help. And I would tell them that out of love. Like, I'm not trying 
like to be like, don't fucking talk to me. About it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he would, he would call me up sometimes. Like, hey man, are you you, you want to hang out? Because I could hear it in his voice that he needs someone like to hang out with. I'm like, no man, I'm on my way. Hold on. Yeah. And I would go hang out with him. Like we'll go grab food, go grab some tacos. Go, we would go to the gym. So mm-hmm. That way he can just work out some of his aggression too. And um, one day he was like just showing me pictures of, like from over there. He was like, yeah, this is over here. Like where now was stationed at. And I was up over here like in the middle of a firefight. And he was taking pictures while they were in a fucking firefight. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. And it was because there was always like down times. Like there would be like over the shooting and then everyone would just like stop. And mm-hmm. he would just be sitting there and his buddies started like taking random pictures. And I guess he's like, at this point I was kind of like at a really dark spot in my life. Because he was like, I think he said like his friend or something just got fucking killed right in front of him or something. Yeah. And, like, he was just, like, at this at that point, he's like, well, I don't even know why we're here. And, like, he showed me a picture, and it's him with his fucking rifle in his mouth. And his finger's on the on the trigger. Yeah. And I was like, how you doing now? And look, seeing that picture, he was like, nah, I probably should go talk to someone. I was like, nah, yeah, you should. Yeah. But, um, it's weird when you have yeah. that moment, because I know when my buddy came back, and, you know, sometimes we joke about, you know, we were, we were cracking jokes. Sometimes yeah. you'll crack a joke where, like, the, to- the tone changes. And he kind of gives you like a serious mm-hmm. look of like, yeah, don't, don't, don't say shit like that. And I'm yeah. like, my bad, my bad, you know. I, I, and I, or sometimes he'll be like, don't ask me questions like that because those do have real answers, and I mm-hmm. don't want to talk about yeah. it. And I'm I like, a buddy of mine here at the college, um, he was rooming, who reigning with another friend of mine. He was deployed, but he came back for college. He was like on the reserves at the time. Then, yeah, I don't know what the fuck, what the hell they do. And uh, we were all drinking. We we're having fun. And the rule of the house was like, "Hey, we don't ask him about any of this stuff because he's he, like he he's dealing with a lot of shit. So we yeah. don't ask him about anything of that. If he brings it up, listen. Don't delve too far into it." Um, and he was talking about like he um, he got out. It was the middle of the night. And he got out to like you know go piss or something because mm-hmm. he thought it was all clear. And um, he said he saw the flash and something hit him in the helmet, and it fucking like knocked his ass back. He got shot in the head, but it, it hit the helmet, so it fucking like ricocheted off yeah and then like of course his training kicked in and he was talking about like like he was like saying like in the movies you know they always say you remember your first and it's actually fucking true uh he says he remembers he brought the gun up saw the guy like he saw like the flash of the guy doom, and he says ah and he says like he remembers it clear as day i'm mm-hmm. like you want another beer dude <laughs> like yeah yeah that, that's just fuck. Yeah. I know recently I was watching this video where they are talking about, like, they've done a bunch of studies, and apparently it was a bunch of studies that got buried by the government. Mm-hmm. And uh, they basically had concluded that majority of the people coming out of the military that have all these, like, issues have severe CTE that was done by them shooting, um, um, like, ballistics. Yeah. Because basically, you know, it rattles their brain every time they're shooting. They're shooting tons of fucking rounds. Yeah. And um, they're saying that, like, they don't want to fucking talk about it because they're like, well, we need them on the front lines and yeah. shit. But I'm like, yeah, but you're you're rattling these people's brains. And, like, you know, um, they were talking about, like, a while back, there was, like, that one dude that shot up a mall and then, like, took his own life. He was uh, apparently, like, an ex-Marine like marine or something like that. Yeah, he was ex-military and his buddy, like, a couple of years back did report him to like their, uh, their like, he had a, uh, he had a bunch of run-ins with the law because apparently he was a little unhinged, but yeah. they, what they, what they learned is that he was actually an instructor while he's in the military. Yeah. And they said he had done, um, he had demonstrated almost 10,000 like grenades. Yeah. Like he, like how, like he basically like taught a class on how to like, how to fucking throw the thing and all that shit. And he was, around almost like 10,000 like blasts yeah. that all of them probably contributed to some type of brain swelling CTE shit. And I'm like, it's pretty fucked that yeah. that's how they're being treated. And hey, I mean, but then again, what can you do? You need people on the front lines, yeah, but you use them, abuse them, then you throw them away. I know, but it's like, it, it's it, like my, uh, my buddy, he just, um, he hurt his back in the military, like pretty bad. And, um, he's been out for a while. And I think just recently he got, the VA finally like approved him. Damn. Yeah, like he's been out for a while. And then, like and yeah, my brother. Yeah. Yeah, he saw some shit whenever like they were uh that fucking like um nuclear reactor mm-hmm. after the tsunami in Japan happened. Yeah, Godzilla came out. And <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, like he um I think he said, he said like a few of his friends died. Damn. Because of cancer. Oh shit! Yeah, because uh, he got quarantined on the boat because um, 
they told them that the water was uh, contaminated because of the power plant. And they had been drinking, bathing, using that water Damn. for like weeks. So then they had to just hunker down off in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. For like a month. Until they got the all clear. Damn. Yeah. That's just crazy. But then he said like in the water you see like fucking people floating around all bloated and shit. Yeah. It's just like, you, I mean, you see, it's not just adults. <laughs> you see kids. And that kind of puts it in your head after, you know, you have a kid that, you know, you see just the body of a kid floating by. Yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy. Remember the U.S. government stole a bunch of Japanese kids? Yeah, that like was, uh, the bombs. what was it, uh, like Operation, like, Sunshine or some shit like yeah. that? Yeah. I forgot, they what, they do, what did they do it for again? So they did it because they wanted to see what uh, effects the bombs had on, like, fetuses and newborns. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all, like, they were stealing the like dead babies. Mm-hmm. And then I I don't think they took any live babies. They're just all dead babies. Yeah. But still they're stealing dead babies. Oh yeah, it's they're stealing fun. people's kids. But yeah. We got really dark at the end here. Yeah, we did. We should yeah. probably end this. You know what? You know, all the veterans out there, you know, you guys are doing great. Uh keep doing what you're doing. You know, we rag on you. People rag on you all the time. Stop eating crayons. Stop, you know, having sex with men and being all angry about it. Just live your life. And uh, thank you for your service. This show is going to get this killed. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be too busy sucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyways, thanks for listening to another episode of The Knife Fun. Just a reminder for anybody wondering, we're going to have a couple of weeks where there won't be an episode just because we're trying to build up a little bit of a catalog because Joe's going to be leaving for Japan very soon mm. or in a couple of months. But we will eventually return back to weekly episodes, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. Also, we're going to be updating our YouTube very soon, so make sure to go find the Night Funk Podcast on YouTube. Yes. Give us a like and subscribe, and also check out our clips that you might find on Instagram and also on TikTok. So hey, if you want, just like them on TikTok. Yeah, all you the know. all the hand all the handles are at the Night Funk Podcast, so make sure to find them, like them, send them to your friends, send them to your family. Yeah. Send them to military personnel. Yeah, they'll yeah. enjoy this. Yeah, send it over to those little girls of the National Guard. <laughs> <laughs> All the boys in blue. <laughs> God. Yeah. You know, I, lo- I think a lot of people would probably be scared of, like, making fun of, like, a military group. But the what's the National Guard going to do? It'll, you have to do it during the week. Because then they, they'll come after you over the weekend, so you just got to hide on them. No, that is true. Just make sure you're not home on the weekend. Yeah. Or the one month, uh, like the one weekend a, m- a month they go to train. <laughs> yeah. Which was always weird to me. Like, I'm like, I mean, maybe it's different. I don't know if it's the guards or the reserve that do it. But there's like, oh, once a month for a weekend you go and train. Yeah. It's like, so you just take like a. A staycation? Yeah, a staycation. <laughs> it's like a workout staycation. <laughs> Like, I know there's a lot that goes into it, but shit. I've done ROTC. I know what you do. For you to prepare <laughs> for the National Guard, you just got to go to a fit body uh, boot camp. <laughs> body plex. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have the weekends off because they all have to go do Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Zumba kick your ass, though. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>